Hi everyone, I thought I would do a couple quick videos on a couple of the Suzuki Book 2 uh, cello pieces that tend to give folks a little bit of trouble here and there. I'm going to go ahead and give you a tutorial on the piece and at the end I'll do a playthrough so that you can, you can hear it at a little bit slower tempo than you might be playing it or practicing it at. The theme from the Witch's Dance, which is number 9 in Suzuki Book 2, and it's always good if you stop and try to isolate some of the elements, the technical elements that you are going to encounter in this piece and isolate them separate from the music so that you can prepare your bow arm or your left hand to, to do these, these skills. And then you can go ahead and put it in the piece and, and practice it that way. So let's isolate a couple things. The first thing, the, the recurring theme in this piece is what we call hooked bowing. Now hooked bowing is a series of bows where you hook or you connect two bows on the same bow stroke. So it would be a down, down, or an up, up. So two bows with a little bit of a stop between the two. This particular hooked bowing is basically a fast, sorry, it's a slow, fast, slow, fast hooked bowing. So it's a little bit trickier than just two bows that are the same uh, tempo or the same rhythm. But what also compounds this or makes this a little bit harder is the fact that not only do we have hooked bowings, is that we also have string crossings inside of these hooked bowings as well. So again, a hooked bowing is just when you're gonna do a down, down and up, up. So that's a hooked bowing and that's a hooked bowing. For witch's dance, it's this, it's this rhythm. So that's the hooked bowing with the long, short, long. And I think the easiest way to do this would be to just to start by doing an open D. Um, and you can think of, um, maybe think of a, some words that can go along with that rhythm to help you. You know, maybe um, witch's dance is tricky or something. So it's like this. And then try it on the A string. So what you're gonna do is a long bow, a quick short bow on the same bow stroke, and then a long bow, and then a quick short bow on the on the up bow. So that's the that's the rhythm and the hooked bowing that you have to do for this piece. And then remember that the hooked bowing does have a stop between the two. So to do this uh, with the string crossings, what you're gonna do is basically you can you can air finger the left hand so that you your bow knows what to do. You're learning choreography here. You're learning the correct motions in the right hand and the correct motions in the left hand, and then you put them together. So for a slowed down version of the beginning, it would be So again, it's What makes it tricky is that after you do the quick down bow, second half of the hooked down bow, you have to whip over to the D string. So that's the rhythm. Isolate that with the open strings. It's much easier to do it that way before you put the left hand with it. Now, in addition to that, we have a little accent mark that we have to do over the quarter note. So it's this. So you want to practice that as well when you, when you isolate that hooked bowing. Now, you can also think of that as skipping, you know, what it looks like or feels like to skip. Dun, da, dun, da, dun. That's the same rhythm that you'll be doing with this hooked bowing. So if you forget what that's like, just imagine what it feels like to skip, and that's going to be the correct rhythm for this. Now, once you've gotten the bow hooked bowing learned a little bit, the next thing that you're going to have to work on here is you have second position in this piece, and it comes in a couple of places. At the very beginning, that's first position. Then you have an option of playing the G sharp in upper second position, or you can just keep it in first position with an extended G sharp. So it's this way, or it's this way. And the next time you have second position coming up is in measure 17. 
Now you are in second position here. It is upper second position. So your second finger will be on the D. It's all right there, no extending. Then you do the same thing, but you go over one string lower. Now for the next line, this is starting at about measure 21. You stay there for a couple notes, go back to first position for those notes, and then back up. So, first. So just second position, it stays there, it's very comfortable position in your hand, so don't worry about moving anywhere else. Once you get to second position, you stay there. The next thing that we have is called back extensions. Now remember, we have two different kinds of extensions. We have back extensions, where your first finger is going to extend back or more towards the scroll. And then we have what we call forward extensions, which is where your fourth finger basically will extend forward. The pitch goes higher, so we say forward or more closer to your bridge. So the first one we have is a, is a back extension, and that's at measure 25. You're going to stretch that back. Then you have to shift up a half step to lower second position for one note. So again, it's back extension. Shift up a half step for the lower second position for one note. Back to the back extension. And then the last extension you have is a forward extension. And that starts in measure 37. That's the second part of 37. So you're coming off of C natural. Extend to the D. Extend to the E. Then you go back to first position to finish it out. So those are the those are the different elements that you have to isolate, to work through, circle those spots in your music, and just drill and kill a little bit before you try to put the whole piece together. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a playthrough for you so you can have a chance to uh, watch me play, see what my bow does, and then uh, perhaps play with me. Feel free to subscribe to my channel below. I'm going to be adding a, a bit more Suzuki literature for you to practice with. All right, on to the playthrough. Thank you. 